Welcome back, guys, here to the Top 50 2014 NFL Free Agents Countdown. We went from 50 all the way to number 11. This is the video for your Top 10 2014 NFL Free Agents as I see them. And let's get right into it right now. At number 10 with left tackle Brandon Albert of the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs franchising Albert last year. Drafting a tackle in Eric Fisher. Uh, they'll move on from Brandon Albert. All signs point to that. I think he'll be the best left tackle that eventually makes it all the way to free agency. And you're going to see a team like the, like the Dolphins um, or maybe the Falcons or maybe the Cardinals overpay um, for his services and expect Brandon Albert to get minimum a $40 million payday here in free agency. Out number nine, I have Eric Decker, the wide receiver from the Broncos. A lot of people have Decker higher than I do. I look at Decker as being the quintessential number two wide receiver on a good team. Uh, I don't look at him as being you know, a number one guy that you need to roll all these coverages over to. Um, but I think in that role, as a premier number two receiver, um, he's the best in the league, possibly, and I think he'll command, you know, anywhere between a six and eight million dollar contract a year. Look for maybe a team get desperate and offer him that nine million a year that I think he's looking for. But I think at like a Victor Cruz gets about eight million a year. That's what I expect Eric Decker to get. Um, a very nice piece um, that if he goes to a good team will definitely be um, the difference between that offense being good and potentially great. Eric Decker at number nine. At number eight, I have Alteron Werner uh, from the Tennessee Titans, a 25-year-old Pro Bowl cornerback that is seems as though he's going to be allowed to hit free agency. Doesn't come along often. I think there's going to be a lot of suitors uh, for Mr. Werner and expect to him uh, to get a big payday, maybe one of the biggest paydays on this whole list. At number seven, T.J. Ward, the safety of the Browns. The Browns, to me, have to make a decision. Uh, do they want to franchise Ward, or do they want to franchise a guy that will appear very soon on my list in Alex Mack? I think they're more likely to franchise Ward if they franchise one of them. Certainly, they'd like to get a deal done with Ward. Look out um, for you know Jairus Bird to be reunited with Mike Pettin, um in Cleveland. If so, does that affect Cleveland bringing back T.J. Ward? If it does, there'll be plenty of suitors uh, for the strong safety from the Browns. At number six, I have the aforementioned Alex Mack. And Alex Mack is really a centerpiece, uh, along with Joe Thomas, uh, to that Browns offensive line. To me, uh, he seems to be a little bit fed up with how things have uh, sort of uh, went along with that Browns organization here since he's been there. The Browns, Ray Farmer, Mike Pettin, and Jimmy Haslam are going to have to sell Alex Mack on returning there. I think they either come to a long-term deal with Alex Mack or they don't you know, he doesn't come back at all because the franchise tag for an offensive lineman is like $11.5 million. And to me, that seems like an awful lot of money um, to pay a center for one year. We'll see how this plays out. But Alex Mack in at number six. At number five, I have my best left tackle available in Eugene Monroe of the Baltimore Ravens. Look, the Ravens gave up draft picks to get him last year from the Jaguars. Uh, I don't think they even let him get to free agency. Um, they're sort of going to have to uh, you know, give him the money that he's going to command. I think he's going to get a contract you know, in the $9, $10 million a year range. I know I'm an outlier on that. A lot of people think he's going to get less money than that. Um, but I think they're going to have to play, pay him like a premium left tackle um, because if he ever does hit free agency, um, I think he's so much better than the other tackles available. That's the kind of offer Eugene Monroe would get. So Eugene Monroe at number five. At number four, I have Brian Arakpo of the Washington Redskins. Um, you've been hearing that uh, even if the Redskins can't sign him to a long-term deal, they'll franchise him, and they should because this is a team that doesn't have many good defensive players as it is. To me, Arakpo is clearing away their best defensive player, one of the faces of their franchise, to let him get away, I think would be a severe blow um, to this defense and to this team. Brian Arakpo at number four. At number three, I have Jairus Bird, the safety from the Bills. And the Bills have shown a lot of interest and willingness to keep Bird. Um, some scenarios that could play out with him would be obviously the Bills extending him, the Bills franchising him. There's been even been talk of a franchise tag and trade to the Browns to join his former uh, defensive coordinator, Mike Pettin. Uh, Jairus Bird 
a free safety who can cover. That's a premium position now in the NFL as far as I'm concerned. With the amount of teams that try to expose those bad cover safeties, a guy like Bird, who's one of, if not along with Earl Thomas, the best cover free safety in the NFL, look for there to be a substantial market for Bird uh, in the $8 million a year range should he hit free agency. At number two, I have Greg Hardy. From the Carolina Panthers. Look, I, I don't know whether the Panthers will be able to pay him or not, um, but the franchise tag will run them around 11 and a half, 12 million. Uh, you have an annual contract that'll probably run them 10, 11 million a year. This is a guy who has coming off of a 15 sack season, plays the run very well. Um, truly one of the best players, defensive players in the NFL as a whole. Um, never mind in free agency. Greg Hardy comes in at number two and number one, guys. All the way from 50 to number one. And at number one, I have Jimmy Graham, the tight end from the New Orleans Saints. To me, clearing away the best tight end um, in the NFL as far as I'm concerned. Um, a guy who is a very integral part of that Saints offense. Um, a guy who's really, you know, when we talk about revolutionizing the tight end position, he's a name that comes up, you know, first and foremost in a lot of people's minds, and rightfully so. He's obviously earned the big money extension. We'll see if the, the Saints can swing that with their salary cap situation. If not, he'll probably get tagged as a tight end. Um, you know, Obviously, he'd rather be tagged as a wide receiver. There's about a $4.5 million difference in the salary he would get. But there's no denying the value Jimmy Graham um, has had on the league and specifically to the Saints. And Jimmy Graham, to me, the clear-cut number one guy here available potentially Probably not, though, um, in free agency. Guys, let me know what you think of this top 10 of my list as a whole. Be sure to hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter as well. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, guys. Um, this, this concludes this list, but I, I'm doing, I do a ton of other videos every day on the NFL and NFL Draft. So be sure to subscribe. It's completely free. Have a great day.